transport across the cell membrane. It refers to the constant movement of molecules and ions. This is across the cell membrane from which it is required of a cell to maintain its function. The illustration below will describe the mechanism of action. There are two classification of cell transport. One is the active transport which requires an energy to carry the cell function and this is represented by an energy symbol. Second to that is a passive transport which is carried on without the need for energy and further explained with the symbol of unnecessary need for energy. Let us further look into the subclassification of a passive transport at the left side of the illustration. Passive transport is further divided into diffusion and osmosis. Let us focus on simple diffusion. Simple diffusion is best exemplified and can best be remembered by internal respiration that is going on within the alveoli of our lungs. And this is where exchanges or diffusion of an uncharged tiny molecules of oxygen and carbon dioxide are taking place. Facilitated diffusion. It is best demonstrated by the transport of glucose to intracellular compartment. And this, this is being accomplished with the aid of insulin. Similarly, osmosis is well depicted by the movement of a water molecules within the red blood cell as this is represented and well demonstrated by the use of IV fluids from which it has a varying water tonicity classified as isotonic hypertonic, and hypotonic. Looking at the right side of the illustration, active transport is being carried on with the expense of energy. And this is best represented by a cellular respiration that will require ATP or the adenosine triphosphate molecule. Not to forget the famous sodium and potassium pump. Further, endocytosis is happening as a cellular mediated immunity when pathogens are trying to attack our cell. Where movement of a pathogens are from the outside to inside. And finally, the exocytosis. This is happening where the cell releases or the need for the release of enzyme, hormones, and antibodies by the cell arises. These all represent a map for the transport that is happening within the cell membrane. The animation clip of a two kayakers that you are about to witness will best explain the difference between active transport and passive transport. The first kayaker on a block gear is going on a downhill direction. This is with ease and without exerting energy by riding on a flow of a rushing water of a river. This depicts passive transport high to low concentration, down a concentration gradient, no cellular energy expended. However, the second kayaker on a multicolored gear will have to paddle rigorously uphill. This depicts active transport, low to high concentration, up against a concentration gradient, 
ETP expense. Diffusion. The movement of a molecule from a greater area of concentration to a lesser area. The rate of diffusion will depend on the type of a molecule and the concentration gradient, from which concentration gradient is a natural consequence. Within a cellular environment, it describes a quantity of solute within the volume of a solution. The illustration below depicts a concentration chamber. It is separated by a semi-permeable membrane in the middle. On the left is an intracellular compartment or inside the cell. There is a presence of a high quantity of solutes within a given volume of a solution. And on the right, it is an extracellular compartment or outside the cell and there is a presence of a low quantity of solutes within a given volume of a solution. And by homeostasis, sooner than later, there will appear an equal or an unequal concentration gradient. Simple diffusion, the passive form of transport without any energy use, with a solute movement from a greater area of concentration to a lesser area. The left video clip is a typical experiment of an ink spill. Having a greater concentration as it scatters or dissociates to a lesser area of concentration. The right clip is a human body diffusion taking place in the lungs through the alveoli, showing exchange of carbon dioxide and oxygen. Facilitated diffusion. It is also a passive form of transport without energy use. It, however, requires a transport protein and it will act on a specific molecule. The repeated and excessive use will result to saturation and this will limit the amount of diffusion. The typical example below of facilitated diffusion is a monosaccharide fructose molecule that is crossing the intestinal cell barrier and that is accomplished with the aid of a transport protein.